Uh, conference, delegates, friends, uh, I'm going to speak quite quickly um, to get it all in under the five minutes. I know I speak for the whole disabled members group and for disabled people up and down the country when I say that we are deeply grateful for the overwhelming support that this resolution has had from branches, member, uh, members and elected representatives. When the UK signed up to the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in 2009, Labour were in government. And although disabled people were already dying from Blair's reforms, the full weight of these seemingly disparate deaths wasn't yet understood. A year later, when the coalition took office, we know that they had already received a coroner's report on the prevention of future deaths, which would save lives if implemented. Ian Duncan Smith and Chris Grayling decided to ignore it, and the Tory Lib Dem coalition dedicated their time in government to implementing sweeping, devastating cuts to social security, health and social care, a program which continues to cut further and deeper with every passing year. In 2012, Disabled People Against Cuts began the formal process of triggering a UN investigation into the violations of the CRPD. This was based not just on the lives lost, but on the multitude of ways the austerity cuts have made life harder for disabled people. We have been pushing for a cumulative impact assessment for years because disabled people are rarely affected by just one cut. It takes a long time to, to initiate an investigation. Multiple sources of evidence have to be submitted, verified and researched. In 2014, the UK became the first government to ever be investigated under the CR by the CRPD, a shameful mark on our history. No UN investigation is undertaken frivolously. There has to be significant verified evidence for the process to even begin. In the years since, hundreds of people have testified and thousands of pages of documentary evidence have been gathered and submitted. In November, the first judgment was passed that the UK government had committed grave and systematic violations of the human rights of disabled people. Westminster responded with a shrug of the shoulders. In late August, the UN CRPD met for a periodic assessment of the UK's adherence or lack of to the convention. Two members of our disabled members group, John McArdle of Black Triangle and Bill Scott of Inclusion Scotland, were in Geneva to testify. The UN CRPD's judgment on the 31st of August was stark. The UK government has created, quote, a human catastrophe in the disabled population. They noted that Westminster has systematically misled the public about the impact of government policies, refusing to answer questions and misusing statistics to create a false impression. They particularly criticized the use of dangerous rhetoric which demonizes disabled people. Again, it's been met with a shrug. Westminster responded that they don't accept these findings and a few sound bites about the most needy and the term 50 billion. The first is a weasel phrase about slightly increasing support to a tiny fraction of people with severe disabilities while stripping it from everyone else. And the second ignores the vast economic, human and ethical cost of isolating, warehousing and killing disabled people. In 2015, in England and Wales alone, research linked 30,000 excess deaths to cuts in health and social care. That's more than three deaths every hour for a whole year. Hundreds of suicides have been linked to sanctions and disability assessments and the death toll keeps rising. The Scottish Government has attempted to mitigate the worst effects and ensure that disabled people have the rights and freedoms accorded by the Convention. They should not have to spend hundreds of millions of pounds to protect people from Westminster and people in the other nations of the UK should not be left behind. Westminster must, as a matter of urgency, halt all impending changes until a full cumulative impact assessment has been carried out and immediately engage with the recommendations of the UNCRPD. Failure to do so confirms that international law is not something the UK cares that much about and they have no interest in meeting their obligations. That should be noted by all countries negotiating with us over the next few years. Scotland's Parliament is founded on the principles of human rights for all. We work hard to be better today than we were yesterday, to fight for the people who live here, 
whoever they might be in whatever circumstances they find themselves in. As my colleague Paula Peter said at the Labour conference, disabled people are not voiceless. We have voices. We just need you to listen. Mind up, please, Fiona. Can I just two seconds? <laughs> disabled people began this process, saw it through, and will hold the government to account. Conference, we demand justice for the dead, and we demand the rights for the living. Please pass this resolution.